All right, this is our last topic. That's exciting. Well, in acids and bases, anyway. It's okay. Let's talk acids. Remember, they taste sour. They're electrolytes. They're conductors. They react with metals. In Table K, we have strong acids at the top. That means strong conductors, strong electrolytes, and we have weak acids at the bottom. Weak conductors, weak electrolytes. We have an Arrhenius acid that has H pluses or H3O pluses as the only positive ion in solution versus a bronsted Lowry acid, which is considered to be an H plus or a proton donator. You, 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 you take it. And then we have bases. Bases are slippery, they're bitter, they're also electrolytes and conductors. We have strong bases at the top of the table, K uh, and table L, I mean, and they are um, strong conductors, strong electrolytes, and we have weak bases at the bottom, and they are weak conductors and weak electrolytes. We can define them in terms of an Arrhenius base, which remember means it has OH negatives as the only negative ion in the solution or as a bronsted lowry base as a proton acceptor or H plus acceptor. Thank you. We measure pH on a scale from 0 to 14, 7 being neutral, 14 being the most basic or alkaline, and 0 being the most acidic. The concentration of OH negative and the concentration of H plus varies from 0 to 14. 0 has the very most H pluses. 14 has the very most OH negatives. But every pH has some because the pH plus the pOH equals 14. So if the pH is 1, the pOH is 13. Okay. If the pH is 7, the pOH is also 7. It has to equal 14. All right, so molarity. Uh, molarity we calculated previously. It's a unit, it's a measurement of concentration, capital M, and we find it by the moles of solute divided by liters of solution. You had to remember to put it in liters. Can't use milliliters, can't use another unit. It has to be in liters. Volume is the amount of space. We're usually talking milliliters or liters, to be honest. Every neutralization reaction is the same. Acid plus base is water and salt. Acid plus base is water and salt. Acid plus base is water and salt. That's neutralization. Acid plus base is water and salt. How do I figure out the salt? I get rid of the H's from the acid. I get rid of the OH's from the base, and then I combine them. How do I know what order? Well, Na was first, so it goes first. Cl was second, it goes second. This had a charge of plus one periodic table, charge of negative one periodic table. That's why it looks like that. You should know indicators, right? Indicators are reversible uh, color changing chemicals that change based on specific pHs. So methyl orange, although it has nothing to do with orange, is red below 5.1, and then it is yellow above 4.4. Brome thymol blue is yellow below six, and it would be, oops, it would be blue above seven. So you kind of have to understand indicators to understand titrations. So that's the new topic. A titration. A titration is a lab procedure that's used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. So what do you do? Well, in this example, I took some acid and I put a known amount of the acid in a, a flask. And then I put an indicator. I'm often using phenolphthalein, okay? Then in this burette, I put a known amount of a base. And I start drop by drop, adding base, swirling, swirling, and I'm looking for color change. And then I'm going to get a final reading. So here is my initial reading. I'm going to get a final reading. When I subtract those, it's going to give me the volume of base I needed. Well, I knew the volume of the acid and I knew the molarity of the acid. 
I knew the volume of the base and now I can find the concentration or molarity of the base. So let's look. So again, we start, we put drops in, swirl it, swirl it, stir it, stir it. And then when we start seeing little bursts of indicator change that disappear when we swirl it, you should be slowing down. Our end point is when we see the very slightest color change. Real bright went too far. So the end point is going to be that pH where I just see the very faintest color of that phenolphthalein. And that's going to indicate I'm right at that eight point, which is the first number for phenolphthalein. If the indicator gets too dark, I went too far. Okay. So again, starting point. They're both clear. I slow down when I start seeing bursts of pink that disappear as I swirl it. My ending point is the faintest. Overshoot, the indicator is very bright. So again, what do I do? I'm using, why am I doing this? I'm using titration to calculate the concentration of an unknown. So say somebody just left some acid or left some base in my room and I'm like, uh, I don't know the concentration of this. Well, here's how I would figure it out. This is something important to note right here. And this is important right here. You see how this does not say molarity of the acid. It says molarity of H pluses. And this does not say the molarity of the base. It says the molarity of OH negatives. So in reality, this formula is fine as it is. Molarity times volume is molarity times volume. But on the acid side, I need the number of H's. I'm going to multiply it times the number of H's. And on the base side, I have to multiply it times the number of OH negatives. You'll see what I mean. All right, ready? We are going to solve this equation. Uh, how many milliliters of this molarity acid must be added to this number of milliliters of this molarity base to make a neutral solution? So what I should remember is MAVA equals MBVB, okay? Uh, that's given to me on the reference table. What you need to remember is acid has to deal with H pluses, um, because we're neutralization, bases are OH negatives. So the number of OHs and the number of Hs matters. So let's look at our formulas. How many Hs, how many H pluses are in this formula? One. Let's look at this formula. How many OHs are in this formula? One. Okay, well that's easy. I can just plug it in like this. So I'm going to write over here, M-A-V-A, M-B-V-B. Which one is my acid? H-C-L. What if you forget? Look at your reference table. The K-O-H is the base. So the molarity of my acid is 0 0.45 molar. That's what I'm trying to find. Molarity of my base, 1.00. And my volume of my base is 25 milliliters. Okay, so let's solve. So MA 0.45. VA is what I don't know, so I'm going to leave it as VA. MB 1.00 molar and 25 milliliters. Multiply these together. So I'm going to keep this just as it is. So this is 25. Uh, now to solve, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.45, 0 0.45. So let's turn this on and clear it and do 25 divided by 0 0.45 equals 55.55555555555. So 55.5555. What was my volume in milliliters? How many significant figures? Two, three, two. Okay, so two. So the volume of my acid is 55 milliliters. And there we go. So that is how you solve this problem. Okay, so again, why 
did I not need to worry about the number of H's and the number of OH's? Because this has one H and this has one OH. Okay, so here we go. This is how we solve it. All right, are you ready? Let's look at the next one. So let's write my formula MABA equals MBVB. Uh, let's find the acid A. Let's find the base B. Okay, now I need to remember that the number of H's has to do with the acid and the number of OH's has to do with the base. It only matters if it's not one. So how many H's are in this formula? One. How many OH's are in this formula? One. So now I don't have to worry about it. I can just make my list of variables, MAVA, MBVB. Go back up here, uh, volume of my acid, 25 milliliters. I have 18 milliliters and it's 1.0 molar. That's what I'm trying to find. So MA times 25 equals the molarity 1.0 times 18. So MA times 25 equals 18. Divide both sides by 25. So the molarity of my acid is going to be whatever 18 divided by 25 is, which is 0 0.72. Sorry, that's a bad seven. Units are molarity. All my significant figures are two. So that's it. I am finished. Okay, so let's look at our titration equation, which is useful for um, figuring out neutralization reactions. So our titration equation. So MAVA equals MBVB. Okay, and remember that's on the reference table. Don't have to memorize it. What I have to remember is that the number of H's and the number of OH's matter. The number of H's matter for the acid. The number of OH's matter for the base. So I have to go back to my problem and see what acid and what base I have. So KOH is my base. There's only one OH, so I don't need to worry about it. But look at this. Uh-oh. H2SO4. It has two H's. So this formula, this MA, is the concentration of H pluses not the concentration of this. So I have to multiply this times two because there are two H's in that formula. You cannot forget this. This is probably the hardest problem, okay? So two times whatever else. So let's figure out uh, where we have our information. So M-A-V-A, M-B-V-B. So 42.5 is volume of my base, molarity of my base, uh, molarity of my acid is what I'm trying to find, and volume of my acid, 50.0 milliliters. So MA is what I'm trying to find, VA 50.0 equals 1.3 times 42. Oops, 42.5. So let's do a little bit of simplifying on both sides. So we'll do, well, 50 times 2 is 100. So 100 MA equals 1.3 times 42.5. What does that equal? 55.25. So 55.25. Divide both sides by 100 divided by 100 equals m a equals 0 0.5525 capital big capital m but three significant figures two three so i only need two significant figures so m a equals zero point that zero doesn't count two uh i don't round it up so there's my answer, 0 0.55 molar. Again, I would have completely got the wrong answer if I didn't remember 
that even the formula tells me this is the concentration of H pluses. And if my acid formula has more than one H plus in it, I have to multiply it by how many H pluses it has. I would have to do the same thing for the base, but in this case, there's only one OH in that formula. Okay, so that's kind of a tricky one. All right, let's look at this equation. It's our last one. Okay, so here we go. Let's write our equation. MAVA equals MBVB. I have to remember that the number of H's matters for the acid. The number of OH's matters for the base. So let's look at my neutralization equation. There's the acid. There's the base. This 2 is not in the formula. That's a coefficient. I ignore it. So look at this formula. How many H's? 1. Don't have to worry about this then. But look at the formula for my base. How many OH's are in that formula? 2. So that means on the base side, I have to multiply it by 2. So my formula is really MAVA. It's 2 times MBVB. Because the number of OH's is doubled. Okay, so now let's see what I have for my values. MAVA, MBVB. So 15 milliliters is the base. 10 milliliters of the acid, 0 0.250 molar of the acid. What is the concentration of the base? So 0 0.250 times 10 equals 2 times MB times 15.0. So let's combine the things we can combine. 2 times 15 is 30. So that's 30 MB on this side. 0 0.250 times 10. Really, I just move the decimal point. So I get 2.50. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Point. Nope. <laughs> Oops. See? That's how when you try to do something real fast. So I divide by 30. I want, I want MB by itself. Silly me. So I do 2.50 divided by 30 equals, okay, 0 0.0833333 equals MB. Now this kind of makes sense because this was a low number for the molarity of the acid, right? So I shouldn't have gotten a giant number. But what about sig figs? 3, 4, 3. So my answer needs three significant figures. 1, 2, 3. 833 three molar equals the molarity of the base. And there you go. That's how to be careful when the number of OHs in the formula is not 1, or the number of Hs, like in the last problem, is not 1. Be careful. This is where you'll get tricked, potentially. Hopefully not now, though. And there you have it, titration. I hope you learned something new today.